Hello and welcome to video number two of the strategy module and trading signals videos. Uh, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to build and create a trading strategy, then plot the trading signals on the chart, and then from there take that information from Bloomberg, export it to the backtesting engine, and then analyze the results. So before I show you exactly how I went ahead and did this, I just want to give you some background. I built a strategy using the fast forward indicator. Uh, it took me about 40 minutes, so rather than create a video 40 minutes long showing you the details of what I did, I just thought I would describe it and uh, begin by showing you what defaults I changed in our standard property settings window. So first let's scroll down to the strategy module side of the program and we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. The start time and end time, I left those at the standard defaults, which means that a trading signal can occur any time in the 24 hour period. And then what I did is I selected the use fast forward mode by selecting this checkbox here. Uh, now what that means is that the this particular strategy for entries is built using the fast forward indicator which triggers an entry when the uh, value of the fast forward indicator crosses above or below the no trade zone side of the indicator. Now, What will happen is if with this type of a entry system is that if you don't have a specific exit target or if you don't have some sort of a, a filter or stop the signals will just constantly reverse so you'll just have uh, long to short or short to long throughout the entire chart. Now what I also did here is I turned the profit target on that's based on this input which is the uh, profit value in percentage. So I selected 10 percent for my value. This was fairly arbitrary. I, I just tried a few different values between 10 and 50 at, at 10 percent intervals and uh, it seemed to work fine so I just used it so I really didn't spend a lot of time dialing that in. Uh, for a stop loss I use the auto stop and the auto stop is the same auto stop that we use on the indicator side when we um, enter the auto stop threshold. So I left that at the default of three standard deviations and uh, if you recall the the auto stop or the, the stop loss channel well, that's what we're using as a stop loss for this system. I believe that I used nothing else. Yes, going through the check boxes, there are no other selections. Although I did make a second system with the arc flag, and I will show you that and how it performed in the backtest engine after we go through this first iteration. Uh, one other note to make about these different entry modes is that uh, now that we bring up the arc is that the fast forward mode does it uses that arc flag and so does the use trend mode and uh, the range mode has a built-in arc function so it always uses the arc and the no mode never uses the arc so just something to bear in mind okay then moving up to the indicator side of the software. We see that uh, I changed the plot no trade zone from the default of 2 to 4. Why 4? Um, well, I just went through everything from 0 to 8 and um, I just happened to like 4 just because of the way the curve looks. Uh, that was really pretty arbitrary on, but from my standpoint. So if you were using this uh, exact same strategy, you may find that changing the trade zone will give you results that you prefer over what I have here. The other indicator changes deal with the arc, but because we're not using those, using the arc right now, I'll just leave those for when we come back. The auto stop threshold I mentioned, we are using that, so we have it set to the default of three. We're not using any of these inputs. However, the prediction horizon, it does affect the f uh, fast forward indicator. I tried different inputs here, everything from zero to three. Uh, so of those four inputs, 
I prefer number one just again because uh, personal preference the way the curve looks and the data look back for prediction I didn't even attempt to change that so I just left that at the arbitrary default number uh, as far as the predictor the forecasting algorithm is concerned I tried all three uh, but uh, they all look good but I leaned more towards the linear regression I just uh, I just again thought that it smoothed the curve pretty well so uh, these inputs have already been updated but what you would normally do is after you make your selections you would click update and those would be those inputs would now be added into the algorithm for the fractal suite and signals and let's turn this on because I had it off and you will see a number of different trading signals appear after it does the calculations okay here you see we have quite a number of trading signals this uh, particular strategy trades frequently and we also have uh, several months of data on the 60-minute chart so I'll just zoom in so you can get a better look and see what is uh, going on here so let's um, let's take a, a quick zoom and here you see a variety of signals everything from entry long to an entry short uh, and then we have the the white dot which is an exit and they are uh, and also uh, those are being controlled by the by the profit target and also by the auto stop values so in this case where we went short but the market moved against us because we didn't reach our profit objective yet we were taken out of the market based on the stop value so now once we see that the signals are plotted we want to take this information and determine whether or not we have a good trading system so this is simple enough to do you just take the pointer and right clicks on a on an area of the chart go to uh, actually go to table view so now you have a spreadsheet here with all of the data that contains the information from the fractal suite and the trading signals so we'll pick a cell and right click on that and then select copy export options and then left click on copy data to clipboard now what we want to do is go to the back testing engine so I already have it loaded but it's empty so you see that there is no information here and you simply go to the paste icon click paste now all that data will be exported into the back testing engine so now we have the information that was on the the Bloomberg spreadsheet listed here we have the uh, trading performance and summary stats in this window which is your generally your basic uh, or com more common information that you would find on most backtesting engines we have the individual trades listed here with their entry and exit prices and whether they are profitable or not and then this panel here to the upper right contains some other trading statistics that you may find useful such as a maximum drawdown with Monte Carlo standard deviations just a variety of uh, of other statistical information and then to the bottom panel here we see we have the equity curve so I'm looking at this and when I was building this and I thought now oh, this looks pretty good it looks uh, it looks alright but I think I can make it better or make it smoother so from my standpoint I'm thinking well I have something to work with so let's go back and see if we can improve it so the first thing I thought was maybe we're getting entries that are not exactly optimal and let's uh, try an entry filter which is uh, which I used and I used the arc for that so I'll go back to the chart and we will uh, go ahead and pull up the property settings window again scroll down and this time select use arc flag so I check mark the box click update and we may see the signals change here we should of course it's a little difficult unless we zoom in again to, to actually see that so 
it looks like we have a few that changed which we should all right let what I like to do is double check to make sure when I make changes like that that they in fact have changed that they took uh, the, yes uses arc flag, arc flag is check marked okay so cancel now what I'm going to do is uh, export this data so we go back to the table view pick a cell copy export options copy data to clipboard and then let's go back to our back testing engine and paste it back in we don't need to clear it and there we have the curve that I was looking for so I don't know about you but I think that that's a, a pretty good curve so I decide I want to save the information for this so I can either use it later or maybe come back and even try to work on it some more so I just simply go up to the save icon click that and now I can name this data let's just call it uh, fast forward system one and I click on save you can see that the information is exporting and you can save this wherever you want to any folder or file that you want and it is saved now so if I want to call that data back I just go to the load icon click on it and you can see fast forward system one the information is there I have another system here which is has been saved and it is the exact same system I just wanted to walk through the process to show you how it works but uh, what I normally do is when I save these this the data I like to uh, list the changes that I made to the defaults to the right of it because you can imagine after uh, uh, maybe a hundred different systems in one folder that uh, it can get confusing to remember what settings you changed but uh, this is the whole process for building the system and testing it and this concludes the video on the strategy building and back testing